Welcome back. Well, let's focus on the next management, BML. That's the one in focus. The company's quarter three performance a little bit weakish. The margins as well contracted by around 330 basis points. Heard. But the management has been guiding for far better times going ahead. And the stock has been on absolute fire. We're joined by Mr. Shantanu Roy, the CMD of uh, the company who joins us on the show. Uh, hi, Mr. Roy. Good morning and always good to speak to you. Thanks so much for joining in on the show. Well, I want to focus on a couple of aspects first up. Uh, you know, quarter four is traditionally the strongest quarter for BML. And earlier, you were guiding for, I think, a 20% growth. As of nine months, it's still in low single digits. But quarter four, I think you're expecting it to be a, quite a strong one in terms of revenue recognition. Do you stick to that number on revenue growth for the year? Good morning, Nigel. Uh, uh, we are in good times. And uh, yes, uh, the quarter four has always been much better as compared to the first three quarters. So first quarter generally second quarter is 20%, third quarter is 30%, and fourth quarter is 40 to 45%. Sometimes you have done 50% also. So I'm looking at something around 45%. So yes, that 20% growth is still possible. Uh, I can see it. Yes, there are certain headwinds, uh, especially uh, with regard to the supply chain, uh, with regard to the geopolitical situation, but we are hopeful that we'll overcome all that. All right. Uh, so, so just to get this correct, you know, if you have to do uh, this growth of 20%, quarter four, you'll have to do 21 to 2200 uh, crores of revenue. We're getting that right. Yes. Oh, that's that's quite encouraging then. So 20% guidance is holding on. The other couple of factors the, is, you know, your... The, positive, the, the positive thing is that, you know, we have the orders. We have the orders yes. in hand to execute. Yes. We only, have to, we only have to focus on the execution and the supply chain. Okay, tell us a little bit more about your order book. Uh, what's your current order book? How's the inflow has been and what do you end this year at? Uh, the current order book is uh, around 12,300 crores. Uh, the inflow this year has been around 6,600 crores, out of which Rail Metro has contributed around 58%. Uh, Defence has contributed around 25% and mining has contributed around 17%. Uh, we anticipate a further order inflow of at least 2,000 crores out of which 75% uh, uh, should come from the metro and the balance 25% should come from defense and the, the mining. Mm. Uh, Mr. Roy, hi, good morning. Uh, can you just uh, qualitatively uh, talk about what is happening in each of these uh, three segments? Uh, the rail metro, with, there's a lot of uh, boom, defense again, a lot of excitement and mining. Uh, you know, just, just uh, tell us uh, how you're executing in each of these projects and, uh, and what sort of top of mind as you see incrementally uh, from here. Uh, very good morning. Uh, you see, all these three business verticals have uh, different uh, challenges, different uh, uh, strategies for execution. If you talk about the rail and metro, the rail and metro is uh, basically a project concept. Uh, every metro project or rail project, it takes at least two to three years to execute. Uh, uh, the defense also is in the same category. Uh, normally, it happens with the uh, first off uh, production model and uh, the clearance and then the bulk production clearance. And then we go for the uh, bulk production. It normally takes uh, two to three years. But mining is uh, one uh, area where uh, the turnaround time is uh, pretty less. Uh, in fact, uh, if I get an order today, maybe in two to three months time, we'll be in a position to uh, 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 execute uh, and uh, we also follow certain strategies to uh, see to it that it is executed in such a short time. So all these three different uh, verticals have three uh, different execution strategies. We are working on several execution strategies, including you know the project manage management concept. We are also coming out with the restructuring the company. And uh, I am sure very shortly you will be uh, seeing in the next financial year uh, restructured uh, BML. Uh, which uh, can cater to the growing market demand, which can cater to an increased mm. efficiency, and which can sure. cater to uh, uh, quick decision making uh, within the organization. Um, uh, you, are, you, you led me to the next question, Mr. Roy. So uh, just give us a broad sense of what we should expect. Nothing specific, but when you say restructuring very soon, uh, in what sense? Uh, restructuring, you see, we are in three business verticals, and the three yeah. business verticals. Uh, we are uh, in the process of further focusing, further breaking down, so that you know the focus can be more. The focus can be on a particular product line, 
uh, that is what we are trying to do. And uh, at the same time, uh, my main objective is one of my topmost priorities is to uh, empower the people, uh, the people's strategy that is at the uh, top of my priority. Number two is uh, we should uh, keep on contributing to the growth aspirations of uh, the government. So, and number three is indigenization. These are uh, right. three of my priorities. So when you say restructuring, you mean internal reorganization, basically uh, sort of, uh, is, is that? Absolutely. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, it I is not only tell... reorganization, uh, sorry, it's not only reorganization, but also, you know, uh, breaking down the old structure and uh, putting in place a new structure. Sure, sure, got it. Uh, I wanted your thoughts particularly on defence because that is the space which is growing quite fast and the government has its keen eye on that. Uh, earlier you had said that you expect the revenues in defence to reach 5,000 crores over the next four to five years. Can you just quantify that for us in the very near term? What's the order book now in the defence sector? What is the order visibility like? And what kind of revenues are you targeting by the end of FY25? You see the order book, uh, the, of the total order book, defence uh, uh, has a contribution of around 25 to 30%, the present okay. order book. Uh, in the near future, in the in the next one to two years, I can see further order inflow of at least uh, two to 3,000 crores. And... Uh, mm -hmm. In the next four to five years, uh, there are opportunity sizes of at least 40,000 crore for us. And uh, we are very well on our way to achieving 5,000 crores of sales turnover from the defense vertical in the coming four to five years. Okay. That's 5,000 crores of uh, sales from the defense vertical. Got it. A couple yeah. of other high growth segments, right? The rail and metro segment is what I want to understand. Um, what is the uh, contribution that you expect from there? What is the kind of incremental orders that you're looking at? You see, the contribution of rail and metro last year, it was around 27% of the top line. I expect uh, this year it should uh, be a bit more to 28 to 29%. Uh, as far as the incremental uh, order flow inflow is concerned, I'm expecting uh, at least uh, some 1,500 to 2,000 crores of orders in the next coming two to three months. And if you look at the tenders which are already out and which are anticipated, there is an opportunity size of at least 12,000 to around 12,000 crores for the rolling stock for the metro only. I'm not talking about the rail sector at all. Some uh, There have been some pushbacks uh, for the tenders to the next financial year, around 1,000 crores plus some big ticket uh, tenders have been pushed back. Uh, if uh, those also fructify, we are looking at an opportunity size of at least 40,000 crores from the rail segment itself in the coming uh, one or two financial years. All right. Uh, you know, and uh, Mr. Roy, just to uh, uh, confirm on the order book, 60% is from rail and metro. Are we getting that correct? And uh, defense yeah. is 30% out of that 12,300 yeah. crores that you were talking about? Yeah. Okay, got it. Uh, you know, a couple of more questions on the margin front. I recall you telling us there is scope for margin improvement. And of quarter four, it's appearing to be a blockbuster because you're guiding for a you know, maintaining the 20% growth, which entails 2,200 crores of revenues. Operating leverage will play out as well. What is the margin band we should work with, point number one? And since you're going to be growing at such a brisk pace, what is the capex you're looking to spend, say in FY24 as well as FY25? Uh, let me talk about the margin first. If you look at our performance uh, in the first nine months, the PBT has uh, seen an in increase of 61 times over the PBT that was last year. That is number one. The EBITDA has, uh, has an increase of 1% over the last year as of now. Uh, as far as the margins are concerned, uh, last year we hit uh, almost the double digits. And uh, this year, I'm quite confident we will hit the double digits as far as the EBITDA is concerned. Uh, 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 now, uh, talking about uh, you know the quarter four performance, yes, definitely if the sales revenue touches these numbers, the, uh, the EBITDA will further grow up and we can then expect uh, at least 150 to 200 basis points in the EBITDA growth. Give us the band, Mr. Roy. What, uh, question. what is the EBITDA margin band we should work with? This 150, 200 basis points is coming about and you're sounding confident about it. What is the band we should work with on a steady state basis? You see, the uh, sector that we operate in is the capital goods sector. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, the EBITDA margin of 12 to 14 percent, uh, I, I consider mm. it uh, very the excellent EBITDA margins. Mm -hmm. You know, we cannot uh, aspire for 18 percent, 20 percent EBITDA being the sector that we work in. 
Uh, I think your uh, your question regarding capex also I need to answer, right? So yes. I, I did not answer your capex. So this year we uh, are infusing a capex of uh, more than 480 crores, uh, which should be around 10% of our uh, sales turnover. And next year it will be uh, further uh, uh, more by at least 20 to 25%. And this mm. is primarily to ramp up our defense uh, capabilities and to ramp up our rail and metro capabilities. Of course, mm. mining, uh, we are uh, trying to replace our old uh, machinery, old plants and equipment, and okay. uh, improve the quality and the efficiency. That is the uh, thinking which is going on. Uh, Mr. Roy, I'm glad you brought that point out because one section of the market believes that you're lagging some of your MNC peers in the railway division especially. Uh, I wanted to understand why do you think that is? Is there some issue that you're facing in terms of quality compared to MNC peers? And, uh, you know, the R&D spends, would you be sort of upping that um, in order to, uh, you know, be step in step with some of the MNC peers? Well, I'm surprised uh, to know that, uh, you know, we are facing challenges as far as the quality of our rail and metro mm. products are concerned mm. as compared to our MNC peers. I believe it's the other way around. I, be, I mean, the quality that we have supplied for the Mumbai Metro, Line 2, Line 7, it's perhaps the best in the world. Number two, the Vande Bharat sleeper that we are going to bring out, I'm sure the quality will be much, much better as compared to the Vande Bharat AC chair car trains that we have seen on the in the market, that we have seen on the tracks till now. Uh, now, uh, uh, as far as, uh, uh, you know, our... Uh, uh, capability hmm. uh, about the, about the capability is concerned. So capability capability has got two uh, aspects. One is the people capability. Second is uh, the uh, manufacturing capability. And there, since we are an engineering company, R and D uh, uh, hmm. forms a very important and integral part. So if you look at our R and D spend, our R and D spend is around forty seven percent of our PAT. Uh, if we take our uh, uh, revenue numbers. It's around two and a half percent, and this we are going to ramp up significantly because we are investing a lot in the futuristic technologies, in the uh, new uh, areas like the engines and the power pack for different applications. So there is a huge focus on the R&D as far as the spend is concerned, as far as the intake of uh, you know uh, key <clears throat> skill sets of human resource is concerned. All right, uh, Mr. Roy, uh, good to speak with you, sir, and good to hear that you're shaking things up. And uh, there is a, that, you know, we look forward to speaking with you next. You said that reorganization, etc., will be soon, and I think that should propel execution even better. Uh, so, great chat. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, it's a pleasure having you here. Stocks up about 3.5%, markets, by the way, up about 6 points.